His wife had recently cheated on him, and now, she is nowhere to be found. Would you believe it if he tells you that he had no hand in his wife's disappearance? Welcome back to Film Flick Recap. Please, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Let's get into the recap. In the first scene of the movie, Detective Patterson of the local police department is at the backseat of a car torturing and asking a man about the whereabouts of a woman they had kidnapped. The man confesses that the woman is dead. The scene cuts back to eight hours earlier where the story all begins. An estranged couple, Will and Lisa Spann, were driving through the city to Lisa's parents' house in Emerson, Georgia. The atmosphere in the car was a little tense until Will asked Lisa if she would miss him. She had recently confessed that she has been having an affair, and now, she needed some time to clear her head. She would be at her parents' for the time being. Will assured her again that he has forgiven her and thanked her for summoning the courage to tell him. Just about then, the fuel alert came on in the car. They had to refuel. Lisa said it's just 15 minutes to her parents, but Will told her that they really need to refuel and drove into a nearby gas station. They reached the gas station at 9.30 a.m. There, Will tries once more to dissuade her from going to her parents, but Lisa assures him that it is for the best. She tells him that she needs to get water and walks into the store. While Will was getting gas, he made a call. Inside the store, Lisa used the restroom and proceeded to get the water. She paid and was leaving the store when the cashier called her back. She turned back just about when Will ended his call and turned to see if she was done in the store. Then, a truck pulled up in front of the store. Will finished with the gas and decided to check on his wife in the store. He entered the store and looked around. She wasn't there. He went to check the restroom and even asked the cashier if he had seen anyone by Lisa's description, but the cashier said no. Will went to check the back of the building and asked a driver nearby. He left a voice note on her phone asking her where she was and why she left him at the gas station. After looking around, he was starting to get worried and he called her line again. It went through to her voicemail. Will returned to the store and asked the cashier if he was sure he didn't see Lisa in the store and where she went. The man denied again and Will started asking everyone around the parking lot if they had seen a woman by Lisa's descriptions. Everyone denied. Will drove around the gas station and after a futile search, he decided to call the police station. He was connected to Detective Patterson who asked how long ago Lisa was missing. Will said about 20 minutes and proceeded to tell the policemen that they were headed for her parents when they stopped at the gas station. Pedersen said perhaps Lisa ran into an old friend, but Will wasn't convinced and replied that Lisa wouldn't have just gone off without telling him. Pedersen tells him that they are currently short on manpower and that he would try to send someone over as soon as possible. He then asked Will to remain at the gas station. Will couldn't remain calm and he paced the front of the store, then got into his car and drove off. He searched the road as he drove to Lisa's parents' house. He arrived at 10.30 a.m. and entered the house. He called for Lisa hoping that somehow she had made her way there. Lisa's parents, Barry and Anna Adams, were both shocked when they saw Will, alone, without Lisa. They were even more puzzled when he asked them if Lisa was there. He told them what had happened and they were in disbelief. Barry asked him if they had gotten into a fight on their way. Will was amazed that Barry thought that way but he assures him that they were not in a fight on the road. He tells them that this has nothing to do with him and the situation with his wife. Lisa had just disappeared at the gas station. He decided to go back to the station and asked the Adams to reach out to Lisa's friends, if she had any, to see if she was with anyone. He was still trying to come to terms with what was happening when he arrived at the gas station again. How can this be happening? He tried to search for any clue of where Lisa could possibly be as he looked at her belongings still in the car. Frustrated, he rested his head and remembered not too long ago when he and his wife were planning a boat trip. There didn't seem to be any problems then, and they both appeared happy, at least, that was what he thought. Until he looked back at his wife and saw that she appeared disturbed. He asked if it was her depression again, but Lisa told him that she needed some space and that she was not feeling anything, anymore. Will comes back to reality and notices that Detective Pedersen had just arrived. He came out of the car and introduced himself. The detective asked if anyone had seen the wife and Will answered no. He told the detective that he even wanted to check at her parents' house and Pedersen asked who they were. He knew the Adams, so he asked if Lisa left behind any personal belongings. Will got her stuff, and they both went into the store. Inside the store, Pedersen asked the cashier, Oscar, if they could get the CCTV footage for the last few hours, but Oscar told them that the cameras had been down for a while now. So, Pedersen collected Lisa's laptop and asked if Will would mind joining him at the station. Will told him that he would rather stay at the gas station in the case Lisa shows up. Pedersen tells him that he would get back to him if he's able to find anything on the computer. Will remained at the station and walked outside the building. He kept looking around to see if he could find any clue that could give him directions. He finally got one. 
He saw that one camera, just out the store, was still live. So, he went back into the store and told Oscar that he thinks that one of the cameras was still active. Oscar told him that it wasn't, and when he was not willing to comply with Will, he took him by his shirt and pushed him against the counter. He threw him around the place until Oscar was forced to allow him to take the storage device for the CCTV. Will hurried to the police station for Patterson to have a look at the footage. At the station, Patterson got an analyst to work on the device Will had gotten. They played the footage while Will told Patterson that he thinks Oscar is connected to the events. In the footage, they saw Lisa walking out of the store. A man appears to have called her, and they talked for a while until the man took her to a car and opened the door. That was when the truck cut the view. Moments later after the truck pulled off, they found that the car had left too. They realized what had happened and Patterson called Will into another room to have a private chat. They got to the office at around 12.15 p.m. and Patterson asked Will if he was sure if he did not know the man on the footage. He then asked if Will knew about any of Lisa's friends in Emerson. Will told him that Lisa hardly talks about any of her friends and Patterson found that odd. He then asked about their marriage if they were having any issues. Will wondered why that was important but Patterson insisted. He confessed that they were currently having a rough time in their marriage and that they had decided it was best for her to take some time alone with her parents. He added that Lisa had been there for him all this while and now that she was having her own challenges, he wanted to be there for her. Will told Patterson that he resides at Manchester in New Hampshire and that he is a real estate developer. Patterson asked if there was a possibility there was anyone after their family and Will told him that he is sure that is not the case. The detective asked if he had insurance on his wife and Will, since where the line of questioning was headed. He asked why he would bring evidence to the police if he had a hand in the kidnapping. He gave a picture of Lisa to Patterson and left the station. He goes back to Lisa's parents' house and they told him she was still not there. They had even sent out an all-points bulletin, APB. He showed Anna and Barry a picture he had taken of the man at the gas station and they recognized him. He was Knuckles, their handyman. He had been with them for years and Lisa was very much familiar with him. Anna also recognizes the car he had gotten into and told Will where she had last seen it at a place called Archer Groove. Will immediately got into his car and drove to the location. He called Patterson to apologize for his behavior earlier but he did not tell him about what he had found for fear that Patterson may deter him. He arrived at Archer Groove at 2 p.m. The place looked deserted, so he got a crowbar from his car as he approached the fence building. He peeped through a hole and then went through the fence. He saw through the window that Knuckles was hurriedly packing his clothes into a bag. Will silently opened the door and went in. He confronted Knuckles but he denied knowing anything about Lisa causing Will to hit him with the crowbar. After tussling for a while, Knuckles gave up and told him that he hadn't wanted to leave her with Frank but that Frank made him do it. Will asked who Frank was but Knuckles reached for a hammer close by and swung at Will. Will dodged and they tussled again until Knuckles reached for a gun. Will pushed him out of the room and continued hitting him until Knuckles finally confessed and agreed to take him to Frank. Will grabbed his gun and duct tape from the house and tied Knuckles up. He pushed him into the trunk of his car and drove off. Meanwhile, Patterson went to the gas station to look for Oscar but he was told his shift had ended. He tells the other cashier that he needs to see Oscar at the station as soon as possible or he is closing the store down. Will drove towards the location Knuckles had given him using his Google map. He wasn't conscious of the speed limits and he was pulled over. He was very anxious when the officer approached and asked for his registrations and license. He told the officer he was from Manchester and that he was hurrying for a family emergency. The officer looked around the car and asked him to open his trunk. As the officer went to the rear of the car, Will took off and ran into the woods. The officer eventually got back to the car and saw Knuckles tied up in the trunk of the car. At 3.30 p.m., Patterson was with the Adams in their house and he asked them if they knew a guy named Clint. Anna confirms that that was the man Lisa had an affair with and through a series of flashbacks, we see Anna talking to Lisa and asking her to stop before things got too bad. In another, Will tells Lisa that he thinks she wants time alone so she could get more time for her stuff. Patterson then informed them that they saw several emails from Clint to Lisa but a background check on him had been done and there appears to be no link connecting him to Lisa's disappearance. He also tells them that Knuckles was not found in his apartment and that technically speaking, Knuckles is not considered a criminal at this point. Around that same time, Will was still in the woods trying to locate the place Knuckles had told him about. He heard a sound near him and when he looked, it saw a road and a four-wheeler. He tried starting the machine but a man with a rifle came out and asked what he was looking for. Will told him that he was going to see Frank but his car broke down on the way. He said Knuckles told him about Frank and that he was having a meeting with Frank expecting him. The man tried calling Frank through the walkie-talkie but it wasn't going through. He then tells Will 
that mobiles do not work out here. Acting frustrated, Will decided to turn back and head back to town but the man called him and showed him the path towards where Frank was. He went through the woods and came to a place like a campsite where he saw many junkies moving around. He draws his gun when he sees a man he thinks is Frank and decides to go into the building. He carefully avoided the junkies and hid behind an old abandoned car. At the nick of time, he saw a man about to shoot him in the car and he grabbed him, hitting his head on the wheel. Then he took his gun. Just about then, he saw Oscar and one other man pull up into the campsite. He manages to gain access into the building and searches the rooms and had to take out another man in one of the rooms. Back in town at 5 p.m., Detective Patterson was told that Knuckles had been found and he questioned him about the whereabouts of Lisa. Knuckles said he had forgotten. But we see in a flashback when Knuckles saw Lisa at the gas station and asked her to come over so she could help him deliver an invoice to her parents. Then, he grabbed a gun and with the trunk blocking the CCTV, he pulled Lisa into the car and drove off. Will continued searching through the rooms and discovered several men preparing some meth in the labs. He hid behind a wall and watched as Frank talked with some of the men. Will thinks about what he was about to do as a picture of Lisa flashes through his mind. He then steps out and confronts Frank and the other guy, Larry. He begged them to tell him where Lisa was but they told him that they don't know any Lisa. He asked them to open the trailer behind and as Larry did, Frank grabbed his gun and fired. Will fired back killing Larry but Frank escaped. The both exchanged fire shots and Will was able to hit him with a shot. Frank grunted and Will approached him with caution but before he could get to him, he was dead. A small fire started in the room just after Will stepped outside. He is now fully and totally frustrated. Frank is dead and he still doesn't have answers to where Lisa is. He remembers when Lisa apologized to him in the car and also called him her favorite human in another instance. This motivated Will not to give up in his search. He ran to another part of the campsite searching the other trailers on the site as we also see Patterson pressuring Knuckles to give up Lisa's location from the first scene of the movie. At the end, Knuckles tells Patterson that she is dead. At about that time, Oscar comes out of one of the trailers and Will begs him to tell him where Lisa was. Oscar told him that he did not kidnap her but he knows where she is. He requested $20,000 for the info. Will doubted if he knew where Lisa really was but when Oscar showed him her phone, he was sure he knew. He agreed to pay the money but Oscar wanted it transferred immediately. As they were still trying to reach an agreement, the building exploded killing Oscar who was closest to it. Meanwhile, Knuckles kept confessing to Patterson and told him that he had dug the hole where Lisa was buried alive. He said that Frank was very angry at Knuckles for bringing Lisa to their location so he wanted to end it all. Knuckles said he ran when he realized that Frank would likely bury him too. At the campsite, the police had arrived and were putting out the fire when Patterson saw Will. He told him to stay put as he checked up on things. He went to the back of the building to check the location where Lisa was supposedly buried. Just about the same time, Will, who was sitting a few feet from another trailer, heard some banging sounds. Patterson saw the fresh grave but when he opened the covering, he found that it was empty. He was a bit relieved. About the same time, Will reached the source of the sound and broke the door open. There she was, Lisa, tied and scared to death. Will carried her out and Patterson called for the rescue team to attend to her. Back in Emerson, at Lisa's parents' home, Patterson arrives and tells Will that Knuckles gave a full confession but still blamed Frank fully for the kidnapping and ransom money. They would never know the truth now since Frank was dead. Patterson also figures that Will had killed some of the men but he wasn't going to blame him for that. He asked Will to take care of himself and drove off. Lisa came outside at that point and after thanking Will, asked him to come into the house. They both smiled at each other when the rain started and they walked into the house hand in hand. If you love this video, why don't you check out other videos already on the page? Also, you can subscribe to the channel, share, and like this video to encourage the team. We will love to hear from you. Until the next recap, stay safe.